On today's menu, I have a fun little compilation of crappy parents. We're going to start off with Mr. I can't get a job. I don't have any money. And then his wife jumps in. This is fun. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. He's uh, telephone only. Okay. And Smith is the name? Yes, Cody Smith. Mr. Smith, uh, in this matter, you're before the court charged with uh, civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. Do you understand the charges? Yes, sir. Court has appointed Mr. Sackrider to represent you in this matter. Uh, have you had sufficient opportunity to speak to Mr. Sackrider in preparation for this hearing? Yes, I have. And uh, Mr. Sackrider, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Smith, I'm going to have you and uh, Ms. Mouton raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in, then we'll take some testimony. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Mouton. Your Honor, in the matter of Decade 2020-0127-DS, Hunt versus Smith, the respondent, Cody Smith, is before your honor for a bench warrant hearing because he failed to appear for a show cause hearing on June 17, 2022 before referee Bradfield. Mr. Smith is currently ordered to pay $342 a month for current support, $171 towards arrears, $3.50 for service and processing fees for a total monthly obligation of $516.50. Last payment received on this docket was on September 18, 2023, in the amount of $144.02, and that came through income withholding. Mr. Smith did post a bond in the amount of $1,182 on this docket on January 28, 2024. This is his first show cause, first bench warrant, and he's had no previous findings of contempt. I measured his compliance over the last 12 months. Mr. Smith should have paid uh, $6,198. He's paid nothing, so that leaves him a shortfall of $6,198. Total arrears on this docket through January 31st, 2024 are $11,614.44. Uh, Mr. Smith was incarcerated from January 27th until January 28th, so that would give him credit for one day in jail. Okay. Mr. Sackrider, do you uh, dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Mouton? No, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for Ms. Mouton? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Uh, Ms. Mouton, does uh, Mr. Smith qualify for uh, the LEAP program? He does not. He lives outside of our service area. Okay. Um, it says here that the last time uh, the child support order was modified was in 2020. Is that correct? That's correct. And do you have the address that the uh, notice was sent to for the June, I believe you said 27th of 2022 hearing that he failed to appear at? That I never got any information for it. Um, just one second. It's a confidential address, so give me one second. It appears to be the same address that we have on file. Do you know that address, uh, the street at least? Um, if it's a confidential address, I can't say that on the record. 
Okay. His address is confidential or hers is? His is. All right. Has uh, the bond that was posted been put towards his arrears? It has not. All right. All right. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Any uh, proofs, Mr. Sackrider? I'd call uh, Mr. Smith. Okay. Go ahead. All right, Mr. Smith. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. You heard the testimony of uh, Ms. Mouton. Was there anything that you disagree with? I didn't receive any paperwork about a court date or I would have been there. For one, for right. two, why wasn't my bond posted? Why wasn't that put towards my rearages? All right. Were you aware of your child support obligation? Yes, I've known that I've had to pay five hundred and twenty-six dollars since twenty twenty. All right. It says here your last this payment last payment was in September eighteenth of twenty twenty three through income withholding. Um were you employed in September of last year? Yeah, I'm still employed through said company. I just, it's, I'm laid off. They don't have work close enough for me. All right, the company's where are you? out of Minneapolis, but they do work out of Holland, South Haven, all around. Where are you employed at? Great Lakes Skill Trades out of Grand Rapids. All right, what kind of work do you do? I am a general laborer. Okay, and... You've been laid off since uh, last September, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, how have you been supporting yourself since that time? My wife has a job. All right, so you live with your wife? I live with my wife and, and our two children. Okay. Um, Is there any payment that you could make uh, on this case? What is your plan to pay in the future? Well, I plan on having me and the wife, we're going to make a payment next week. And how much is that? Anywhere from 100 to 150. I All also right. have to pay bills. I have a life of my, I have a home of my own. I don't live with my mother. I, I have my own responsibilities. All right. Are you willing to put the bond that you posted of $1,182 towards the child support rears? Yes. Okay. Um, are you going to receive a tax refund soon? Yes, I will be filing my taxes today. I just finally got my last W-2 in the mail last week. I just haven't gotten around to filing. I've been stressed out about court and everything else. I will right. get it filed today, and that back money, they child support automatically takes it. They'll automatically have it. And whatever I get from federal or state, whatever the child support don't touch, I'll bring down and I'll pay you that too. I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of being in the court system when I take care of my son when I have him. I'd like more time. All right. How many children do you have with uh, Miss Hunt? I have one child. One bio I have one biological kid. All right. Uh, how often do you see that child? I see him every other weekend right now, as said with mother. Okay. Are you willing to apply to the court to modify your support obligation or change your parenting time? Oh, as soon as I go and make a payment next week, I'll be go I'll be filling out the paperwork to revise my parenting time. I I want more time. Okay. All right. Since uh, September of last year, uh, have you been looking for work? Yes, I have. I have put in six applications a day, roughly every day since being laid off through Indeed. All right. And what uh, responses are you getting, if any? That's just it. If any, none. I felt like I, I got into an argument with Walmart the other day begging for a job. And I mean, it's to that point where, you know, somebody with a ninth grade education shouldn't feel like they, they are begging for work. So it's been a while since I heard your brains. I thought, you know, now would be a good time. He does actually have a pretty good point with, you know, someone with a ninth grade education should not be begging for a job. But it kind of depends on where you are in the U.S. because jobs are kind of clustered in certain places where there's a lot of businesses, things like that. I'm not going into the whole economy side of it. But if you look at entry level positions, 
that do not require a formal education and anything less than getting a high school diploma or a GED is considered no formal education. And if you look at it across the country as a whole, there's projected to be about 36 million job openings. Of course, that's not going to increase as much as positions that have higher degree levels required according to this study, but that's not what we're talking about. Now, if you look at the number of working adults in the US, it's about 61, almost 62%. There's, it averages out to about 207 million working age adults. Now, if you take the number of people who have a high school diploma or less, it's gonna be about 11% because 89.3% of the population in the country as a whole, and Michigan falls into line with the average of the country as a whole, have a high school diploma or higher. So we're looking at that, you know, 11, a little less than 11% that don't. Now, that's going to come out to 36, no, 22 million, just over 22 million. So you have 22 million people who are available to work those 36 million jobs. Some of those people with more advanced degrees are going to work a little less. You know, we all remember Sal Goodman working in the donut shop. Doesn't always work out for you. You know, I have a degree and I'm sitting here talking to you on YouTube. It happens. So maybe Walmart wasn't the right place for him. And Siggy says hi. All right. Uh, your highest level of education completed is ninth grade. I have supported my wife through her schooling this year. And next year I will be applying for, to do the same. She's, get, she's a credit and a half away from having her high school diploma this year. And I will be working on mine next. Okay. Um, all right. Do you have any uh, current expenses? I have rent that is almost $800 a month. Electric, which runs because I heat my house with electric because it's cheaper than propane. About $200 a month. Okay. Anything else? No, besides child support and keeping gas in the vehicle. All right. Um, all right. What's uh, what's your plan to pay this obligation in the future? Well, for now, it's to make payments as I can until I get employment and can start making payments again. <laughs> I am in the process of working for employment. I'm not. It's not like I'm just sitting here on my butt. I'm trying. Okay. Anything else you would like to tell the court? No. Thank you. I have no further questions. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, you stated that you since uh, September, you currently do you put in approximately uh, six applications a day looking for employment. Why have you not been able to acquire employment? One vehicle, prices of gas. I have two other kids to make sure that they get on and off the bus. Okay. I've actually been doing that. Doesn't tell me why, doesn't, that doesn't doesn't tell me why you haven't gotten employment. Those are other responsibilities. Why people won't hire me. What? I can't tell you why people won't hire me. I can't afford to have care. Well, have they told you a reason? I mean, the, the labor market is really tight, so it would seem like you'd be able to acquire employment. Well, employment doesn't have to give you a reason on why they won't hire you. I'm not saying they, they have to. I asked you if they did. Well, they haven't. Okay. Did you tell me with uh, Great Lakes so why you've been laid off? Why has it been so long that you've been laid off? Because honestly, it's been easier employment-wise for the wife and kid-wise for our kids for me to be at home to get them on and off of a bus. I don't have a driver's license. So I, don't, I can't drive myself anywhere legally. Okay, that doesn't tell me why you're not why you've been laid off for that particular time. So, have you taken you're a voluntary not. layoff? Is that it? 
tell them that because your wife couldn't afford the gas money since I, I'm oh, not going to get Hold on. Money. Hold on. I don't know who's talking. This isn't Mr. Smith. This isn't Mr. Smith, so don't talk. I'm fucking. I'm not going to be told what to do in my fucking house. Yes, fucking yes. Ma'am, if you want to be held in contempt of court and go to jail, keep she left, up. So she's no longer here. Okay. Mr. Smith, uh, why you say it's easier? Have you taken a voluntary layoff? Is that it? Yes, so I can take care of the other two children in my home. Because my wife's job was closer and easier on the gas. Okay. I was working all the way out in Holland at the new fucking Energizer factory. And I'm sorry for my language, but like I said before, I'm a laborer. I don't have the best vocabulary. Well, don't swear. You can do that. You can, you can respond without <laughs> swearing, sir. I'm a little frustrated at this point because I'm being made to be like I'm a bad person when all I failed to do is pay some fucking fine. Okay, sir. If you keep swearing, I can hold you in contempt and you can go to jail. You want to do that? <laughs> No. Okay. But of course, there's no understanding for a father's frustration. It's all about the mother of this court system. Well, say what you will. We're, de we're dealing with you right now. We're not dealing with the mother in this case. Because there is such thing called the freedom of speech, and I am defending myself. All I'm asking you to do is answer questions, sir, not defend yourself, to answer the questions I ask. I will to my best ability. Anything else that you would like the court to be aware of? No. Nope. Your Honor. Yes. Front of the court did make make a mistake. We did receive payments from August 14th and through September 18th. So we received payments in the amount of $646.85. So that would leave Mr. Smith with a shortfall of $5,551.15. Okay. Okay, thank you and what for about, that clarification. What about the 1186 to bond myself out? What does that go towards? Sir, Why that doesn't that? get taken care of until today's hearing, so you wouldn't have gotten credit until such time as the court forfeits the bond. So it's nothing that the front of the court has done. They can't do it till we have the hearing. Anything else, uh, Mr. Sackrider? Uh, no further proofs, Your Honor. Okay. Well, in this particular matter, the uh, testimony has shown that uh, first the court will note that there is a bond uh, posted in this matter. The court will forfeit that bond in this matter, apply that towards the arrearage in this particular case that uh, Mr. Smith does not have a prior uh, finding of contempt in this uh, particular case, that he does owe approximately uh, $11,600 in arrears with the uh, a reason amount of the correction, it would be just under $11,000 that uh, court would note that he uh, had received one day credit for time in jail in this particular case. Uh, that uh, court notes in the testimony in this matter that uh, Mr. Smith has been laid off from Great Lakes Steel Trades that he had worked through approximately uh, September of 2023, that he has taken a voluntary layoff as he states it is easier to, uh, again, to handle and to handle the uh, his current children, his household in this uh, particular case. Uh, He stated that uh, since that time, he's put in uh, uh, six applications a day. He was looking for work. He does have a ninth grade education that, uh, again, acquiring employment, he said, this has been hindered somewhat by the fact that he has one vehicle and he has some uh, gas issues and for as far as expenses in this matter. 
However, it does appear because he's taken the voluntary layoff that he has in fact uh, failed to comply with the order in this case. He said he's known about this since back in 2020, that he's failed or refused to comply in this matter. The court will therefore find him to be in contempt of court. Anything before sentencing, Mr. Sackrider? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, as Ms. Uh, Mouton testified, this is a uh, first show cause hearing uh, for uh, Mr. Smith. He testified that uh, he's willing to put that uh, uh, bond over $1,000 towards the arrears, which the court has done. Uh, he testified that he's filling out six applications a day. Um, so in this uh, matter, we would ask that he be sentenced to time served, the one day served, um, and that uh, he be allowed to continue to look for work and uh, make payments on this child support obligation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, what the court's going to do, uh, Mr. Smith, the court could sentence you up to 45 days in jail. I'm not going to do that, but I do feel that some uh, amount of jail time is warranted. The court will sentence you to 14 days in jail with credit for one day served. The court would allow you to purge yourself of contempt by paying the sum of $250 in this matter. I'm going to require that that purge amount be paid or you report to jail no later than four o'clock on March 1, 2024. And uh, that will be the order of the court. So you'll actually you'll report to the Callan County Sheriff on March 1 or pay the uh, purge amount in this uh, particular case. So that will be the order of the court and you're free to go. Have a good day. Hey, so if I come down and what you're telling me is if I come down and pay the $250 today, it, it, it takes care of this, right? Yeah, if you pay it by the uh, March 1st date, so you pay it today or any time in between there, then you wouldn't serve the jail time. That's correct. Well, you will have your money today, sir. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, then. Have a good day, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now let's move on to Heather's here. We're going to do Mr. Parker first. Case number two, it's too much. You just take her. This one I was a little conflicted on because for one, I recognize the parents can't handle it, signing over their rights, okay. But at the same time, the parents can't handle it and they're just gonna sign over their rights? I don't know, you tell me. We're here today set on a status hearing and we are conducting this through Zoom. We're live streaming. And Ms. Taylor's making our record. Okay, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Courtney Brown is my permanency specialist. We are present and ready. And Your Honor, I believe Ms. Sapien um, notified the court, but I do have a signature from her. Correct. She was in another hearing. Um, and I'm looking to see, do we have CASA present? I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody. Okay. Uh, Lorraine Lucero, on behalf of the father, Jesus Zuniga, Your Honor, we're both present and ready. And Your, your Honor, I may, I actually, let me check. I may have gotten a signature from CASA late last night. Stacey Zavala for Esmeralda. Yeah, I, I have a sick CASA, signature from CASA, Your Honor. Okay. All right, then, uh, what do we have new since the court report was filed? Since the court report was filed, um, at the time it was filed, as Mariah was on a runaway status, um, she returned to care about a week and a half ago, um, but sadly, last night, she ran from placement, so she's currently on runaway again. Where did we locate her the first time? Um, so this is her third runaway stint since she came into care. Uh, the last time she was found and recovered around Garland, Texas, um, she was put into a step bed placement in that Dallas area. So I'm going to assume she's somewhere in the Dallas area at this time. 
Do we know about any what her connections are when she was on runaway last time? Yes, ma'am. Um, the SI will be notified um, of all the previous contacts that we were able to use to find her in that area last time. So I'm sure those will be explored again this time. And when we find her then, what are we going to be looking at? Um, so she has until noon today to return to the stepbed placement. Um, if that doesn't happen, then they will discharge her. And when she returns to care, I'll have to do an emergency placement request. Um, so that's probably going to end up being another temporary placement until we can find her long term. Um, but due to these runaway episodes, you're probably looking at an RTC type environment. Okay. All right. Um... <clears throat> For the short amount of time that we had her, was she seen by a physician? Um, she has had a, a medical exam, yes, um, and a dental is, exam as well. She hasn't been anywhere long enough to establish counseling or CANS or anything like that, though. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, I hate that, but. You just take that one day at a time. Okay. Uh, what about families' plans of service? Uh, both have service uh, service plans, um, and it's essentially just family counseling and then maintaining contact with me. And those were filed on February 5th, Your Honor. Did parents sign those? Not yet. All right, and since Ms. Sapien's not here, but um, Ms. Lucero, have you had an opportunity to go through that with your client? Your Honor, I uh, spoke with my client. Um, not uh, well, I did speak with him about the service plan. However, um, I don't know if, if this is the time to discuss it, but I had reached out to Stacy and Daniel and Bailey Sapien uh, yesterday, and my client is. Um, has decided that he'd like to uh, sign relinquishment paperwork. I know that we're early in the case. We talked about that, but I mean, he's pretty adamant that that's what he wants to do. So I wanted to let the court know that today. Okay. It is early, but, um, you know, and, and I don't know what Ms. Sapien's client's wishes are. So, um, and since she's not here today, I, I hesitate to really take that up. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm just going to interrupt. But at this time, could I um, just request the department or whoever prepares those? I, I believe Daniel had advised that they could send paperwork over and we could discuss it further with our clients and go from there. Yes, ma'am. And that, they'll be sent over this morning. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Zavala? Your Honor, I was able to have one long conversation with Esmeria at the very beginning of the case. Um, I was scheduled to talk with her last night, and when I called in, that's, you know, I found out she ran from school. Um, so I really don't have, have much to add at this point. Okay. Judge Baker, I apologize to interrupt again. Um, another another basis um, that for uh, my client's request is recently uh, the child did reach out. Um, he advised me to the mother and threatened threatened him, threatened the mother, and threatened the siblings. You know, she said once she got back, she was gonna, you know, do different things to them, but she threatened them, and so they just are concerned about her ever returning to the home. I understand. Well, what we'll do for today is just um, because she's on runaway and, and you know, this, I, I want you and Ms. Sapien to have adequate time to discuss all this with them. But um, I'm going to go ahead and order the service plans, you know, as an order of the court. Um, I, I, I understand the, you know, the complication here. Uh, I mean, they can't do 
they can't do family counseling with the child that's on runaway. So uh, we'll go ahead and order it and see how it develops. Um, basically, Mr. Mazuniga, I, what I have to tell you at today's hearing is that the service plans are in order of the court and failure to work the services could mean termination of your parental rights. I understand that you're considering whether or not you want to relinquish, but but um, this is just the stage of this process where I have to go ahead and make those orders. Um, so we'll just see how this all develops, but um, just, just know that, that failure to work those services can mean termination of your rights on a different ground than if you voluntarily relinquish. That's, that's the real distinction, so. Um, <clears throat> Okay, then our next hearing is scheduled for June 13th of 2024. Um, see what happens and what develops if if they do decide to relinquish and we want to schedule that for a final. Just let us know and we'll move that date up. Yes, ma'am. So, okay. All right. And Ms. Rizzuto, get anything that you all want to say today or talk to me about? And y'all are muted, so I can't hear you. Yeah, you'll have to unmute. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> I spoke to my lawyer yesterday and well, the things, the issues that she's been doing as Mariah, uh, we decide, me and my husband, that we want to delinquish our rights. I I want to make sure that my other siblings, her other siblings are safe and ourselves too. She, I feel like she's in danger to the family. I mean, she's done several things to me before and she sent me a text message where I saw all I'm doing is trying to find her, make sure she's safe and she the things that she told me i i send a screenshot to my uh caseworker so they know all these things that who she's been uh hanging out with that uh, who was holding her the same person that had her this last time she knew all the time that she was a missing person she didn't report it until she decided that she didn't want her no more uh my son's incarcerated and I don't know, for some reason, her she calls her mom Megan. It's her stepmother. It's not with my son. She's not with my son no more, but she has two children. She's known all the time about is Mariah's uh, whereabouts. She got a hold of them, and she, Megan got, uh, the lady that she was staying with this last time, well, she started writing an email to my son. She called my son and said that she's going to continue to run away. She don't want nothing to do with the family. That's why I had signed a paper that none of the families, not that we don't want her, we love her, we miss her, but the things that, the issues that she's doing, the stuff that she's doing, it's not, it's not right. And I feel that she needs to be in a placement that she's not allowed to be around internet school. I mean, she needs to be behind doors that, you know, she is being protected. And I honestly think that she is schizophrenic, bipolar, because it runs in both families. Yeah. I mean, for the stuff that she's doing in the internet, it's, it's not properly, you know, it's not good. And I'm worried about her that something is really going to happen to her, but she continues to run away. And then the the things that she said about my husband, it's, it's, it's not true. And I don't know why she's bringing up all these things. And it's just, I mean, I know she's not in her right mind. And then continue to do drugs and not taking her medication. The goal is, the goal will be to find her. And then we'll try to, to get her in a secure placement where, you know, um, we can maybe start trying to work with her, get her stabilized on some medication, start working with her and, and trying to turn this thing around. But I understand that you've got concerns for your the safety of your family and other children in the home. So I'll let you talk further with your attorneys about that. And then, you know, we'll, I'll either see everybody back, like I said, June 13th or, 
perhaps before that. Okay, so. that'll work. Well, okay. thank you for your time. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you for communicating and letting keeping the keeping these folks apprised of anything you learn about or whereabouts. Yes, ma'am. Okay. No, thank, thank you. All, you. All, right. All right. You're you're yeah. free to go. <clears throat> Next, we have Mr. Selfish. I'm gonna traumatize my kids for the rest of their life because I didn't get my way. Did I say yes? Yes. Oh, okay, why don't you come over here and have a seat for me? Right around the four there. I hope there's a chair. Looks like there is. Yeah, there you go. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Bonnie, I need you to talk loud, okay? Just so that the, the thing in front of you that's that are lit up red, that's recording, that's for the record. So kind of pretend like you're shouting loud enough so the brain can hear you, okay? Okay. Um, all righty. Do you know a Benjamin Waldron? Yes. And how do you know him? He's my husband. Okay, and how long have you been married? We've been married since 2017, been together since 2009. Do you have children together? Yes, two. And their ages are? 12 and 9. Okay, taking you back to January 13th of 2024, were you and Mr. Weldron together? Yes. Okay, and where were you at on that day? I was in the bedroom. At what is the location of where you were? At our house. And what is the address there? 1115 South Cornell Avenue. And what city is that in? Oh, good point. Okay, that's okay. And is that in Genesee County? Yes. Okay. And do you see Mr. Waldron sitting here today? Yes, he's sitting over there. Uh, okay, can you maybe describe what he's wearing and maybe point again to where he's sitting so that the court can... Orange. Please. Okay. Please let the record reflect that she has identified the defendant. No, Judge. This witness has identified the defendant. Benjamin Waldron. <clears throat> Okay, and back to the 13th of January. So you said you were at your home. Yes. Okay, and did something happen that day that caused us to be here today? Yes. Okay, and can you start by telling me what were you doing that day? I was in the bedroom and the kids were in the living room eating lunch. Okay. Was mm -hmm. Mr. Weldron there with you at that point? Not at first, no. Okay. So you were with the children alone at first? Yes, we and had just got back from the store. Okay, and then what happened? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. We had just got back from the store. The store? The store. Okay, thank you. And when you returned from the store, you said you gave the children lunch? They, they went and made their own lunch. And what happened then? He had, then Ben came home through the front door. Do you know where he was coming? Was he I don't planning on having him come home at that point? I didn't know when he, I never knew when he was going to be home. Okay, when he, he called first. Okay, and when he came home, what happened? He started yelling about dishes and laundry not being done. And what happened? I told him that we had just got home and they were eating lunch. Where were you at this point? Still in the bedroom. And the kids were? Two, the... Two youngest ones were in the living room eating lunch, and the oldest one was in the bedroom laying on the bed, in their bedroom, sorry. Okay, and what happened next? He asked me if we were gonna talk. And did you respond? I told him, can you just leave me alone? Did he leave you alone? No. What did he do next? He said, we need to talk about this. What is he referring to as talk about this? We got in an argument the night before. And did you agree to talk? No. What happened when he you didn't agree to talk? What, was that? what happened when you didn't agree to talk? He kept bugging me. Okay, by bugging you? Kept you saying, uh, asking me if our marriage was over. Okay, and at that point, did you respond? Yes. And what did you say? I was being sarcastic and I said, yep, it's over. What happened next? He says, is that what you surely want, truly want? And did you respond to that? I said, yes. Then what did he do? 
He said, well, you better get to calling my mom and the cops because this isn't going to end well. What happened next? I called the cops. I didn't bother calling his mom. Okay, and at this point, I'm sorry. At this point, where were you? Still in the bedroom. Okay, and where was he? In the bedroom doorway. And when you when you used your cell phone, did you call 911? Yes. And when you reached the operator, what did you tell them? That he was yelling and he was It was talking crazy. And by talking crazy, what does that mean? He told me to either call his mom or call them, so I called them. And at that point, he went out into the living room and grabbed his gun in front of the kids. Okay, so he went into the living room, and you're already on the phone, and he grabbed his gun. What did he do with the gun? He loaded it. And did he, was he, you said he went and grabbed it. Where was the gun located? I'm sorry. In the living room where the kids were. Did he stay in the living room with the kids? He came back to the bedroom. Okay. With it. Go ahead, I'm sorry. He came back to the bedroom with it. Okay. And what was he doing with the gun? He was holding it in his right hand upwards. And what was he saying? <clears throat> saying, I'm sorry. He told me to tell the cops that the, uh, what the gun was and that he had it and it was loaded. And what were the children doing at this point? Crying and on the ground. On the ground as in? The one that I could see was Faith. She was on the ground in the hallway covering herself. Uh, covering her, like, you mean with her hands or yes. with an item? Okay. Okay. And could you get out of the bedroom? No. So you, did you try to, did you tell him you wanted to get to the kids? I asked him, I said, so you're going to leave the kids without a father? And did he respond? He said, is our marriage over? I didn't answer that. I said, are you going to leave the kids without a father? He says, if this is over, then... I'm done. And at this point, are you still in the bedroom? Yes. <clears throat> and you cannot get to the kids? No. And he's still in the doorway? Yes. Okay, at what point did he, or it, was there a point where he left the doorway? Where you Not until the cops got close. Okay. Um, about how many minutes do you think that was? I'm not for sure. Okay. And when he did finally leave the doorway, where did he go? Do you know? He, he went out the front door while telling the kids, you can blame your mom for this. Okay. And when he went out the front door, did he take the weapon with him? Do you know? Yes. Okay. Did he leave in a vehicle? Do you know that? Yes. Okay. And once he had gone out the front door and left in the vehicle, what did you do? I was still on the phone with the cops, and I went out and checked on the children. Okay. And did you stay on the phone? Yes, until they came to the house. Okay. And when police arrived at the house, was he still gone? Yes. And how did you feel when all this was going on? Here. Did you... Did you think something was going to happen to you? I didn't know what was going to happen. Fair enough. Okay, were you injured in any way? No. Okay, and were the kids injured? Mostly, yes. But physically? No. Okay, I have no further questions for this witness. You 
said you had an argument the night before? Yes. What was that argument about? About him getting help for his anger. Okay. That's it? I told him that if he didn't get help for his anger, I was leaving. Okay. So you were in the bedroom of, of your home, correct? Yep. And you said children were in the living room. That's when he came in through the front door. Yes. So when you're when you're in the bedroom and then he, he came into the bedroom then and that's when you two started having an argument about uh, you saying that the, the marriage is over, correct? Yes. You said you said at one point you said sarcastically, but th is that what you meant when you said it? I just wanted him to get help. If he wasn't going to get help, I was leaving. Okay. So you you were saying it was old. I mean, it really wasn't sarcastic. That's what you intended to say, correct? I just wanted him to leave me alone. I didn't know what to think. Okay. So you called the police, correct? Yes. You called the police while he's still in the bedroom? Yes. And that's when he went and you say he got he, he uh, got a gun? Yes. And what kind of firearm was it? What was that? What kind of firearm was it? A Bushmaster, a hunting gun. Hunting gun? What, was it a rifle or a pistol? I'm not for sure. What it, <clears throat> I just know that he, he said it was a Bushmaster. Long gun? Yes. Okay, so not a pistol you hold in your hand? No. Okay. Did he ever point the weapon at you? He held it upwards in his hand. Did, that wasn't the question. No. The question was, did he point the weapon at you? No. Do you know what it means to point a weapon at somebody? Yes, I do. Okay. Meaning the barrel would be pointed at you? Excuse me? Okay. I know this is hard. I'm sorry. Take your time. Yes, I do. Okay. And, and he never pointed the barrel at you? No. Did he ever point the barrel at the children? Not that I know of. Okay. You didn't see him point the barrel at the children? No, I was in the bedroom. Okay. Did he ever say he was going to shoot the children? No. Did he ever say he was going to shoot you? No. In fact, the entire time he was really threatening himself that he was going to kill himself, correct? Yes. So he never threatened anyone other than himself. He said this wasn't going to end well. Okay. You're, you, you made a statement uh, when the prosecutor was asking, but it sounds like you said this to him, that you said you're going to leave your kids without a father. Yes. And you, you said that to him? Yes. And my understanding of that statement would be that it means that he's going to kill himself. Yes. Okay. So if he leaves the kids without a father, he was not threatening the kids. He's not going to kill the kids. He's going to kill himself. He wasn't going to kill you. I didn't know if he was going to kill himself, do something to put himself in jail, if he was just going to leave. I didn't know what he was going to do. I could not read his mind. How okay. am I supposed to know? All right. Well, but your, your statement was that he was going to kill himself. He was going to leave his children without a father, correct? I didn't say he was going to kill himself. I said you were going to leave your children without a father. Okay, what did you mean by that statement? By he was going to leave his children. Okay. I didn't know which way he was going to leave his children, but he was leaving his children. Oh, meaning he's going to leave them either just leave the marriage and not come back and not be with his children? However, I didn't know what he was thinking. I've never yeah. seen him act that way. Okay, I'm just wondering if you have an understanding of what that statement meant. There's many ways for that statement to mean. What was your understanding? That I didn't know what he was doing. Okay. And then the last time you saw him was he left the, left the front door of the, of the residence, correct? Yes. Did, did you actually see him get in a vehicle, or did, did, he, was he, did he take off before you got a chance to see him again? I didn't see him get in the vehicle. My daughter did. Okay. Um, but that was the last time you saw him? Yes.
One second. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing further. Just really quick, just just to clarify, to hopefully clear it up a little bit. When you said leave the kids without a father, tell me again, how could he have left them without a father? He could have left them without a father. Objection, Your Honor. She just said that she didn't know what he meant by that. She gave several instances, Your Honor, of what she could have meant by that. I'm just trying to make it clear on the record as that there was multiple meetings to that in her head. It was exploded. She can't have it both ways, Judge. She's she's going to testify that she had no idea what he meant. Now she's going to testify. Oh, now I know exactly what he meant. That's what's going to happen. I'm not asking what he meant. I'm asking in her head what what were the ways that she believed that he could have left the children. And that's what I exactly asked her. So then she didn't answer my question properly. And she's got a right to yes. But I asked to re recross on that. Very good chance. Okay. Thank you. Don't don't cut me off. No, sorry. Judge. Okay. Go ahead. In what ways could he have left the kids at that point? In all honesty, when I told him to leave me alone, he could have just went to his mom's. So you were you were not thinking of a particular way that he could have left the kids at no. that point. It was just a statement that was it made. It was just a statement. Okay. No further questions. Nothing further. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, I'm sorry. I missed the question. Or you stated I heard was pointing the gun out. What, what, where did he point the gun? He had it. Oh. In this right hand. Holding it upwards. Upward towards the ceiling? Yes. Right there, or toward, okay. Okay. Just up to the ceiling? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sorry. Did you see him load the, the rifle? Did you see him load the gun? No, he was in the living room. The kids were out there. Oh, okay. So you don't know if the gun was actually had the ammunition in it or not? I'm sorry, that no? No. Okay. okay. I just know what I was told. Okay, I missed that part, I guess. What, what were you told? Objection. But got his gun out. Yeah, I'm sorry. Wait, um, when I say what were you told, did. did did your husband say anything? Did Mr. Walter say anything to you about the rifle? Yeah, he said, it, it's on the recording to us, on the phone with the cops. He said, let them know that I have my gun and it's loaded. Oh, okay. okay. I don't have any other questions. Anything else? No, Your Honor. No, thank you, Judge. My apologies for that. No, that's okay. That's right. It's uh, then you can step down for me, okay? Your Honor, it seems we have just, so this is on the record, um, there was somebody in here, um, I believe on Mr. Waldron's behalf, that was recording while we were on the record. He's up here in the side room, Judge. I actually had him, re oh, I went through his it's phone, removed okay. all the videos and the pictures he took, so they're no longer on his phone, but if you want to address him, he's sitting yeah. up here. Yeah, I have him come in. Okay. Yeah, you can keep the here. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I don't have any right. Sir, please have the podium. Sir, what's your name? Patrick Brown. Were you in the courtroom a little while ago? Yes, sir. Did you phone? Yes, sir. Were you recording? I was going to, yes, sir. He did record, Your Honor. There's 30 some seconds of recording. Is that right? Yes, sir. What? Why would you tell me you were going to? Huh? Why did you just say you were well, going I mean, to? It, it wasn't working right. And so that's all I got was 30 seconds. 30 and seconds is 30 seconds is. He had two seconds on there, Your Honor. One was short, one was one was like 15 seconds, one was 36 seconds. Is that right? Yes, sir. You know, we let you come in with things like that so I can trust everybody. And then you do something like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just take your phone. You're right, sir. I, I was wrong. My humblest apologies, and it won't happen again. Well, you, you think you were just going to get away with it? I wasn't really thinking about trying to get away with anything. I was thinking about trying to help my nephew. 
I was talking to him. And, and, and you knew, every sign out here says you can have a phone here, you can't record. Okay. I didn't see where I couldn't yeah. record. But Do you have your phone? Yeah. Yes, sir. Why don't you come up here and give it to me? Turn it off. Why don't you turn it off for me? Did you? Did you? Did you leave it over there? Everything's deleted off there. Turn it off. Sorry. You pick it up tomorrow. Okay. Pick it up here. The clerk's window. At the clerk's window. Yeah. Okay. Right. Give me your name again. I'll put it right on the on the phone. Patrick. Great. Judge, can we find out was that sent to anybody? No, it was not. Can we? I didn't look at that. I just looked at the video. I pulled up and looked and see if it did send to anybody. Can we talk? Yeah. Uh, it was not sent to nobody. That I can promise you. I didn't have time to do nothing. I was trying to get into work and it wouldn't work. So I. I did not send no one. Why don't we do this? Why don't you back up that podium for me? Okay. Would okay. you raise your right hand for me? Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give me the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. And we just talked about you recording on your phone, correct? Yes, sir. And you're telling me right now that you did not send it anywhere? No, I did not. Did, you haven't got it stored anywhere? No, sir. It's, it was deleted right yeah, off? It was deleted. The officer deleted it. Okay. He moved it. He, he moved it both to trash and then uh, deleted to trash. I was just going to thank you. I was going to ask about that too. Okay. And if it happens to show up someplace on a, either the cloud that you got things stored on or anything like that, I will delete it. Okay. So you, you understand that you can't use it for anything? Yes, sir. Okay. You pick your phone up tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. That's the clerk's going to go. All right. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. You're welcome. Yes, Your Honor. Um, the people call Sergeant Blake Pollock. Thank you. Do you swear from your testimony you're about to give me the truth? Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's come up and have a seat. Call me. Okay, Sergeant Pollock, can you tell me, well, can you first state and spell your name for the record? I'm sorry. Uh, Blake Pollock, B-L-A-K-U-P-A-U-L-I-C. -E and can you tell me where you work? Longworth Township Police Department. And can you tell me what your duties are there? Um, patrol supervisor and K-9 handler. Okay. And were you on duty on January 13th, 2024? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall being called out on that date to a situation involving a Benjamin Waldron? Yes, ma'am. And can tell you can you tell me how you were called out? It was a 911 call in regards to his wife calling. Um, Bonnie was stating that Benjamin was armed with a long gun. And they just had a verbal domestic where he was threatening suicide. Okay. And did you immediately leave to go to the scene? Yes, ma'am. Officer Palmer was already on, speak on scene speaking with Bonnie, and, uh, which at that time myself and Officer Bowie began in the canvas area. We were informed that Benjamin had left the area in, I believe, a gray pickup truck with a red tail gate. Okay. And when you arrived on scene, did you arrive at the location of the call? Yes, I just 
briefly drove by and I could see, um, obviously Benjamin's no longer there and Officer Palmerder was speaking with the victim. So I decided to check the area for Benjamin. Okay, and did you find him? Officer Boley informed us that he located Benjamin in the 5,000 block of Summit at the vacant Tucker Elementary School. And did you go to, to the vacant Tucker Elementary School? Yes, uh, Officer Boley waited to make contact, uh, waited for myself and Officer Palmerder. I did observe Benjamin to be parked in the Tucker parking lot facing southbound near the north side of the parking lot. Um, there is two entrances from the north and the south off of Summit, in which at that time I cut around the neighborhood to come up from the south so we could, I guess, make contact with Benjamin that was in the vehicle. And did you make contact with him? As we pulled into the north and south entrance, I was on the south side. Um, this day was, it was super bad weather, it was a freezing cold blizzard, but we did observe Benjamin to step out of his pickup truck armed with the long gun. Okay, and what happened next? Uh, Benjamin walked probably, I'd say maybe 10 feet um, east of his vehicle that was parked and he got on his knees and put the rifle underneath his chin. And what did you do at that point? The way the wind was blowing, I had a hard time kind of hearing what Benjamin is saying, so I informed Officer Palmerder to make contact with Benjamin over the loudspeaker. Okay, and at this point, were you both um, in uniform? Yes, ma'am. And in marked police cars? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so what happened next when he made contact over the, the loudspeaker? I could sometimes hear things here or there, like Benjamin yelling, he's going to end it all, or took that to his part. Um, I immediately got on Center North Dispatch advised that you know, we located Benjamin and that he was armed with a rifle, threatening suicide at you know, Tucker Elementary, where we did have uh, additional units being Flint City, uh, the county, and Jesse Township. We had them block off Summit, north and south of us, so we can contain Benjamin to one area. And did you ask Mr. Waldron to drop the weapon, toss the weapon away? I never had personal contact with him or you know, speaking with him. That was Officer Palmer. Okay, but he was he asked was, to. Yes, over the loudspeaker, he was informed that we were there to help him and he needed to drop the firearm. Did he drop the firearm? No, he did not. Did he come over to where you were? Did he make any attempt to follow any direction? No, he did not. After approximately, I would say, 20 minute standoff with Benjamin, he re entered into his vehicle, which was a Chevy pickup truck with a plow in the front. Um, he then drove eastbound through the parking lot where I could observe Benjamin still had the um, rifle like slung across the front of his body. Um, at that time, Benjamin went through the ditch at Tucker School, around a couple of patrol cars, and began to flee northbound on Summit. And if he is going northbound on Summit, is that in the location? Is he driving in the direction of the house where the children, the wife and the children are? Yes, Bonnie and the children were? Approximately three streets from where his family was at. Okay, so what did you do next? Um, fearing that you know it was going to escalate and then Benjamin was no longer contained in you know the safety of our containment area. Now he's you know, open to the public and armed with a rifle and obviously you know, his mind isn't you know, right. Um, I was fearful that if he did make it back home we are going to have to use either deadly force on Benjamin or there's possibly going to be a hostage situation or you know, somebody's life is going to be taken. So I made the decision um, to make contact with Benjamin's pickup truck with my patrol unit, I would say approximately four times. Okay, so you're saying make contact, I'm assuming. Tell me what that means. I ran the rear of Benjamin's vehicle. He attempted to make a eastbound turn onto his street, which his residence was only, I think, three houses east of Summit off South Cornell. Okay, and so you said you rammed his vehicle four times? Yes, sir. At that point, did he stop? Um, after made contact or ramming him three times, each time he was trying to make an eastbound turn, you know, I didn't want to allow him back to his residence. And then uh, as we went, farther northbound up summit in between, I believe, Princeton and Kurtz. Benjamin slowed down towards the side of the road where the final contact of my patrol unit 
spun Benjamin out and disabled my joint. Okay. And did that cause any injury to you? Um, I had a little bit of bruising to my face from the airbag and some bruising to my wrist. That's it. Was anybody else present in the vehicle with you? Um, my canine partner, Jaeger. And what happened to Jaeger? Um, I, I think he might have tweaked something in his neck or back because for like a month after that, he kind of walked with like a lean to his head. Okay. And after you made the final contact, did, did he exit the vehicle? Did somebody have to enter and get him out of the vehicle? Um, when I made the final contact, all the airbags went off my vehicle, so I immediately exited the vehicle because I didn't know where Benjamin was at, and I knew he was still armed with a rifle. As I exited the vehicle, my vehicle was kind of like a northeast direction, and Benjamin's was like a southwest direction. And our, I would say our doors, our driver doors, were probably 15 feet apart. As I exited uh, my train, I was near the rear of Benjamin's uh, pickup truck, where I was giving commands to basically throw the <coughs> rifle out the window. I then retreated to the backside of my patrol unit where I continued to give uh, Benjamin commands. At one point, uh, Benjamin did slowly put the rifle out the window with the barrel facing towards me, although I could see that his hand was on the back butt, butt stock. So to me at that time, wasn't a threat where he then threw the uh, rifle outside the pickup truck. Okay, and at that point, what happened? Did he then? I was able to hurry up, go up there, retrieve it. I threw it off to the side near like a wooded area. I then retreated back to the other officers that were probably uh, 15, 20 yards to the south of me on Summit where they had stopped, where we then began to give Benjamin uh, multiple commands to step out of the vehicle. And because at that time, we were unsure if he had any more weapons with him. Did he? So you said you gave him multiple commands to step out. Did he step out? Eventually he did. He was he appeared to be highly agitated. At one point he, you know, we were asking him to lift his shirt up. That way we can make sure he had no more weapons on him. You know, he ripped his shirt off and was highly agitated, saying if we were going to arrest him, that he was going to assault us. Okay. And did he assault you? Um, I advised Benjamin at this point we had no other options that he was going to be placed for risk restraints, and I. Uh, Approached Benjamin after he had taken his shirt up. I holstered my weapon and approached him calmly and was, you know, trying to explain to him, listen, you have to go in handcuffs. We have no choice. Um, he tensed up and basically stated, I'm, you know, I'm going to punch you in the face if I go in handcuffs. At that time, Officer Palmerder did come up to assist me, in which I had Benjamin's right arm. Officer Palmerder grabbed Benjamin's left arm. He began to, I guess, flail back and forth where he was taken to the ground. Okay. okay, I have no further questions. Thank you. Did you seek medical attention for your injuries? No, I did not, sir. I was checked out by medics on the scene. You said the, the, the canine may have had, had some injuries. Did the canine go for any vet, veterinary treatment? No, I did not, sir. So you're discussion about the possible canine injuries. That's just based solely on your observation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any redirect? No, you're not. Uh, okay. I guess I don't have any questions. Thanks, Thank sir. Time. Can you please state and spell your name for the record? Zachary Palmrider, Z A C H A R Y, Palmrider, P A L M R E U T E R. Thank you. And where do you work? I work at Mount Morris Township. And what are your duties there? I am a patrol officer for the Township of Mount Morris. Okay, and when you're, were you on duty on January 13th, 2024? I was. And were you on that occasion called out to what would have been a domestic um, that involved Benjamin Waldron. I was. Okay, and can you tell me 
I, I, we, we went through what had happened that day. Um, when it came time to apprehend Mr. Waldron, can you tell me what happened? Okay. The uh, physical uh, apprehension? Yes, the physical apprehension. So after he was, after he had gotten out of his vehicle. Okay. Uh, I was standing behind Sergeant Pollock when Sergeant Pollock originally approached uh, the male, uh, Benjamin Waldron. Okay, and what happened next? Uh, he did make statements to uh, Sergeant Pollock and I that he was not going in handcuffs uh, repeatedly. Okay, and did you attempt to get him into the handcuffs? Uh, we did attempt to uh, get his arms uh, behind his back to be okay. able to place the wrist restraints on his back. And, or when you, back. and when you were attempting to do so, what what, what was he doing? Uh, he did pull his arms to the front of his body. Okay, and when you finally were able to get him into the wrist restraints, were you still standing? Were you? We were on the ground. Okay. Okay. Were you injured? I was not. Okay. All right. No further questions. No questions. Nothing, nothing. Yep, we rest. Okay, Your Honor, the people would motion that the court binds these charges over unlawful imprisonment, count one, weapons, felony, firearm, count two. Police officer fleeing and eluding in the third degree, count three. Weapons, felony, firearm, count four. Uh, police officer resisting and obstructing, causing injury, count five. Police officer assaulting, resisting, obstructing, count six. And then obviously domestic violence is a misdemeanor, which we found over based on the testimony that was given today. Okay. Your Honor, we object to the record to bind over um, understanding that the domestic violence typically goes with it. But there was no support on the record whatsoever for any of the other Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just as to the domestic violence, Your Honor, um, I believe that you just need a fear or apprehension of immediate harm, which I believe Ms. Waldron did testify to as she was being threatened. I think we might have actually heard this one before, but I only work seasonal. In some states, seasonal workers don't get unemployment. We have either party on that matter present. Yes, Joshua Griffith. Thank you, sir. Good morning. In front of the court, what is the status of this matter? The defendant has a support obligation of $374 and an account balance of $5,865.29. The last payment received was in October of 2023 in the amount of $119.20 and September 2023 in the amount of $476.80. The defendant contacted the front of the court on January 29th to make aware he would be returning to work at a previous employer in late March to early April. The front of the court seeks direction from the court on how to proceed today. Thank you. Mr. Griffith, would you please raise your right hand? Yes. I'll be swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right, sir, what would you like to say regarding the status of this? Um, I guess I probably wouldn't um, be in court today. I have an employer that I was at. I usually get unemployment because I'm a seasonal worker. Um, and there were some issues with that last year, uh, right when the last payment was received. Um, I am returning to work. The withholding through them is still good, um, but that won't be until um, late next month, early, or this would be like the first of April. All right, so I 100% hear you clearly. So you did not get unemployment this winter? Correct. I usually do. That's um, that's kind of the issue that I've that I've had. The last two years getting unemployment has been uh, been kind of hard to achieve. There's a lot that goes into determining whether someone's eligible for unemployment benefits, especially as a seasonal worker. It's primarily based on how much you worked previously and the reasons that you were let go. If you do qualify, one of the biggest problems is there's requirements that you go on a certain number of 
job searches every day and you have to submit those in in order to qualify for your benefits. So you have to be actively looking for a job and you have to accept any job that comes along for you. You can't just sit around and wait for your seasonal work to start again while you're collecting the unemployment. Um, in the meantime, is, there, is it a possibility to make some kind of payment arrangement until I go back to work? Well, payments are always welcomed. Um, so I, I guess I want to clarify. So in the past, you got unemployment, but this winter you did not? Yes, um, I do asphalt during All right, the summer. Okay, stop. All right. So why didn't you get it this last winter or this winter? Uh, um, because right before um, the season ended, I switched jobs to um, – it, it was to – to make more money on the hour. Um, and they promised me that, um, you know, I would be able to work enough to get um, the minimum requirement to start unemployment and that did not happen. All right. And what prevented you from working then another job during this time frame? Um, I, I guess just every time that I tried to, you know, work somewhere or, I mean, right now I do like uh, DoorDash and Uber Eats, but obviously that's not doing me very, very good. And I have, right, yeah, so I have children seek, here as well that I take care of. Did you of seek too. out other jobs? Hold on, sir. Did you seek out other jobs or did you just DoorDash? I DoorDash. And I, I okay. seek other employment. It's just um, my vehicle is not very reliable. How much have you made uh, doing DoorDash? Uh, probably like 100, 200 a week. Okay. Any other source of income? No. Do you own a place, rent a place, or live with somebody? I rent. Okay. How much do you pay in rent? Uh, right now it's zero because it's income based. Okay. Is there a reason you didn't make any payments since October? Uh, I want. I mean, I I plan to make payments, but every time that um that I in, in, expected some kind of income, it was it was almost impossible to make the payments. I mean, I'm a single parent. Um, I'm just I'm trying to. I'm pretty much just surviving paycheck to paycheck whenever I do make anything. Well, you're also close to $6,000 behind in child support for another parent. Looks like you've basically taken the winter off, made zero payments. You've got no rent. So I don't understand why some of that money that you're earning through DoorDash hasn't been paid towards your support. I understand how it looks. Or why you wouldn't go seek additional work. There's nothing, it sounds like from your testimony, nothing that prevents you from working, correct? Correct. Anything else you'd like to say, sir? Um, I mean, no, I apologize. And, you know, when people are seasonal workers, they need to understand that their support is based on how much money they earn throughout the year. So when you're earning more money when you're working, you can't go living paycheck to paycheck and spend all that extra money. You need to save that money so the money's there to pay your support in the months that you're not working full time. Um, that really is the obligation of the parent. Not the, the it shouldn't fall on the other parent then to go without because the other parent is inappropriately budgeting their income. All right. So, well, given the testimony of Mr. Uh, Griffith, I am going to recommend a finding of contempt. Uh, Mr. Griffith is in arrears. And I'm also satisfied that he had the capacity to pay out of his resources some portion of the amount that was due, as indicated, he has earned some income um, since his last payment in October, but he has not made any payments. I'm also satisfied with the exercise of diligence that he would have the capacity to pay all or some portion. Um, there's nothing physically or mentally that prevented him from obtaining additional work. Um, I don't believe he has made a good faith effort to pay and again, that he is able to make, was able to make some type of payment. So I would set this matter before 
Judge Hunter. On April 4th. Yes. I believe that date is no longer available. The 11th would be available. Okay. So April 11th before Judge Hunter. If you make a payment of $2,000 prior to that court date, then that court date would be canceled. Okay. Any questions, sir? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're all set. There's so much going on in this next one. I'm just going to let it speak for itself. Any word? Okay, so I'm happy. I've, I've reviewed your motion. Ms. Flussell, is there anything you want to add to it? Um, no, just um, let my people go, as Moses said. <laughs> That's all I can Good say. Biblical <laughs> I can't deny that. Okay. That's fair. Um, Ms. Willenbring, anything you want to add to your response? Um, no, I'll, I'll leave it in the discretion of the court. I, I would like to make a request that, uh, and I put this in my response, that uh, there'll be a no contact order with Madeline Powell. And I'm going to ask for a no non-consensual contact with the other three children. I don't know if your honor will grant that, but I think considering the situation, I'm going to make that request. If well, she I mean, so you may not know the answer to this and you don't have to necessarily, I don't know if I need to know what's going on, but do we know where the kids are? Are they with their dad? Are they with a neighbor? I believe they're with the father. Yes. All right. Um, your honor, I do believe they are with the father. Uh, we have no issue with the no uh, contact with Madeline. I, that's to be expected. But I think the contact with the children, she is the uh, custodial parent. The children are only with the father because of this case. And he does not have custody. And uh, the children don't want a disciplinarian parent. So if they don't want contact with her, I don't think that that's their place to say. Uh, it's her place to say she's not accused of abusing them. I guess my question is, what's the story? Like, is there a, is there any sort of pending custody case? Or I mean, what, how, how does she have custody of the kids? Is it through yeah. a divorce? Is it through yes. uh, uh, paternity? Is it through... Uh, uh, support? What's the kind of case? So, Your Honor, I will let Ms. Powell address it in a moment, but I will just say this. You are the judge on the case, and it's my understanding that you issued a warrant for the arrest of the father because he has not made payments. He has not paid child support, I don't know. and he does not have custody of the children whatsoever. It's my understanding, but Ms. Powell, can you address this further? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to say that my children's father are not, he's not active in their lives and he has not been. Um, he really hasn't been active in their lives for about three years prior to this, to me catching this case. The only time he's seen them is when I actually was arrested and then when we were just in court. So since the time I had been arrested and at the end of 2023, no, 2022, he had not seen them. He has not been in contact them, with them, not because of my doings, but because of his. And all this time that I've been incarcerated, my children are missing school. Um, my oldest, my second oldest camera, she has a 3.0 GPA. My youngest daughter, Layla, she has a 3.4 GPA. My son, Anthony, he has a 3.8 GPA. And I would like to think that I had something to do with that. And with them being with him, we live in total different counties. I live in Detroit and Wayne County. My children are missing school. He's not providing for them. He's not doing anything for them. I'm the sole provider. I do everything. It's so not how do you know, like how do you know that they're missing school? Because they, they've been like, they're not answering the phone calls from my mom, from my sisters, just to check on them. And like, I provide cell phones. I pay for that. I do it all myself. And he's taking away their phones. They haven't even been able to contact. Like, 
like anyone, nobody's heard from them since they've been with him. My mom reached out just to check on them and make sure they're okay. So they take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Like we got to just do this one step at a time. My mom so, reached so, out. So you don't know, in fact, that they've missed school, but you believe that they have. I do believe that they have because they don't have any clothing. They don't have anything from home. They don't have anything. When I tell you they have had zero contact with my family, my mom has reached out, my sister has reached out, and for whatever reason, he's taking their cell phones. They won't even text back. They won't answer any calls. And like the last time that they did- So see I guess the, here's the, I, I mean, I'm I'm literally listening to you, but I'm, because the, I do- in I the do other have so much speak. Okay, but there's no, there's no, there's nothing. Right, so if I let you out today, yes, there's no way for you to peacefully get those kids back. If you don't know where they are, they don't have phones. They're not answering their phones. The police aren't going to shove them into a car. No. So I'm just trying to do this in a way that does not create an okay corral situation for these kids. I'm not denying that you want to see them and you're worried about them. And I'm also not even denying that you have custody of them. But the deal is this, I, what happens if you show up at his house and a huge altercation ensues and somebody gets arrested? You're already in trouble and I don't wanna see you get into worse trouble. I don't want your kids to see you and their, and their father fighting. So even if I let you out today, this the domestic case is not in front of me so the the case that gives you custody is a divorce case and there's no motion right now he hasn't filed anything to get custody of the kids and you haven't filed anything to seek their return because you've been in custody so i'm just letting you know that this is two separate matters so i think ms willenbring addressed this possibility and i think the truth of it is I probably cannot issue a no consensual contact order with the three minor children because she's their custodial parent. Mm -hmm. But I'm just telling you, Ms. Powell, I am worried about what happens when you get out and those three kids. Because if you take matters in your own hands, Ms. Schlussel can tell you things could go dreadfully worse for you. Just, I'm, I'm worried about that. Your Honor, if she... I believe she has paperwork stating that she is the custodial parent. You are a regular criminal defense lawyer, right? You don't do a lot of divorce. I do. I'm just telling you, in my experience, I thought that the police, when you show them the custody order, they like, whoop, those kids go. That's not my experience, both as a lawyer and a judge. I've, I've had that experience. I have two cases right now in Wayne County where that has happened and in o another case in Oakland County. So I think maybe it just depends on the individual officer. I don't know, but she does have the paperwork. If they won't return them, then that is the next step to file something with the court to get it, another order. Okie dokie. So um, I'm going to order her release today. So can you text Asia Mayo or email her and ask her the date? I mean, is that is she going to be the one doing the interview if she comes into probation, or should would she just come in and? Yeah, she can get, come to probation, provide us with her telephone number and address. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. That's okay. So what's going to happen, Ms. Paul, is I'm going to release you on personal recognizance. I'm not going to hold you till next week. I'm going to release you on PR. When you get out of the jail today or tonight, you're gonna to have to come down to the courthouse tomorrow morning and check in with probation. You gotta leave your contact information. Agent Mayo is the person who's gonna do the interview. I don't know if she'll be here and on site tomorrow. So I don't know that she'll see you, but you gotta leave your information. She'll reach out to you to do the pre-sentence interview, okay? Yes, sir. Um... So I that was a lot of talk about your kids. And that's not really the subject of this. And Ms. Schlussel and I, she's kind of wearing her superwoman outfit because apparently she can wave those papers around and get things done. Uh, that has not been my experience. So my worry for you, ma'am, is that you're going to come out of jail, barrels ablazing to get your kids back. 
And I need to caution you, be very careful about the decisions you make. You, I am going to maintain the no contact with, is it, is it Marilyn? Madeline. 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 But um, as far as the other kids, I'm not going to make any orders regarding them, but I need to be, I need you to be very cautious, be very much in touch with your lawyer, because I don't want you to get into further trouble because you are thinking you're justified in doing something. And it may turn out that you're not, and that could be really bad for you. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, sure. For the record, you're. For the record, Your Honor, I, I haven't waived the papers. I've had clients show them to the police, and that has worked. Your Honor, I have a question regarding tomorrow. So you're letting her out today, correct? Yep. So if is she supposed to come here tomorrow just to give them her information? She is. So is that since she lives in Detroit now, is it possible that she could phone in her information to them instead of coming here just for that if she's not meeting with anyone? So I'm so sorry that this process is inconvenient. I mean, do you want me to, I, I'm not like, I'm not going to sound super sarcastic, but essentially you're here asking me to release her. I was going to keep her in jail to complete the interview and then she could be released then. But I'm thinking, Hey, she wants to get out. So if she, yeah. I don't know when she'll get out. If I were to say she may be released tomorrow, what if she doesn't get out tomorrow until five o'clock? So I don't control that. So I'm saying she's got to come in and leave her contact information. Okay. So that, I mean, I would, I, I, I just can't just authorize her to phone it in. As well. Okay. Thank so, you. So uh, I'm going to order your release on personal recognizance. We do have the sentencing scheduled for April 3rd at 1 30 p.m so here's the deal ms powell though this doesn't allow us any real to wiggle on this appointment so when you get the appointment with probation if you don't keep it i'm not just going to adjourn this without remanding you again and i'm not threatening you like with jail but we are now kind of crunched up against our timeline so it's imperative on you and i think that the interview will probably be on the phone or on zoom like i don't know that you'll have to come back in for an interview i'm not sure about that but i think that we i just got to impress upon you you got to keep that interview appointment because we can't just push this off off because I released you from jail. Okay. Yes, sir. All yes, right. Sir. So I'm just going to, I'm going to ask you to be super careful as it relates to your kids. If you can peacefully get them back and that doesn't devolve into a bad situation, I'm not making any changes to the custody or anything like that right now, but I am worried about it. So just be caught, be careful, be cautious. Okay. Yes, your honor. All right. Yeah. And finally, Mr. I got child support cases open in three states, and I'm not paying on any of them. Uh, Elise Scarborough present. Thank you. Of course, what is the status of this file? This hearing was adjourned from December 20th, when the defendant was ordered to pay $1,016 monthly. This sum is composed of $916 for support and a hundred dollars in overdue support the defendant has a count balance of twelve thousand eighty seven dollars and fifty cents the defendant was given option to pay two thousand thirty two dollars to remove this hearing there has been no payments to date the front of the court seeks guidance from the court on how to proceed today thank you mr dibble would you please raise your right hand Solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, Your Honor. All right. What would you like to say, sir, regarding the payments in this matter? Yes, sir. I spoke to uh, Shasta, my case manager, this morning, uh, and we are doing the research. I've received three different child support orders from Michigan, Wyoming, and Colorado, and we're trying to figure out exactly... Uh, where every bit of that is. Uh, I also have a disability form that I'll be filing. Right now, I've been seeking unemployment, but I do have military disability and just filed for military uh, disability unemployability. All right, so if you're not paying Michigan's support order, which support order are you paying? I'm not paying a support order, sir. That's what we're trying to figure out is which support order is supposed to be being paid because... I mean, at this point, if there's three of them, I don't find it right that I'm paying three different support orders 
while also not being able to see my children. All right. So again, my question is, which support order are you paying? I am, I'm not paying any. If I am uh, talking to Shasta, I will be making that minimum payment for the Michigan one, sir. Front of the court, do you know if there's any issues with any other orders or has that issue been addressed with your office? From our understanding, there's only one charging support order that was um, actively charging should be just Michigan's based on the information I was able to research this morning. Thank you. And sir, did you provide any of those other documents showing support orders from other states to the front of the court? No, talking to Shasta this morning, I was going to provide it by the end of the week. All right. And you currently own, rent, or live with somebody? I rent. How much is your rent? Rent is $1,475. What type of income do you have currently? All I have right now is military disability. All right. How much is that? $1,919. When did you last have other income? Uh, it would have been... August of last year. So August of 20, not last year, the year before. So August of 22. Brother Corey, I might've missed it. Um, when was it the last payment in this matter? Or has there been a payment? There has not been a payment. All right, Mr. Dibble, anything else you'd like to say? No, sir. Uh, it's no, sir. Thank you. All right, well, given the testimony and the history of this matter, um, there is an arrears in this matter, uh, now exceeding $12,000. I do recommend a finding of contempt for Mr. Dibble, given the arrears and his failure to pay. I am satisfied he has the capacity to pay out of his resources some portion, all or some portion of the amount due. I'm satisfied with the exercise of diligence. He would have the capacity again to pay all or some portion to some portion that is due. He's not made a good effort to pay and is able to make a payment on this matter. I will set the matter before. Judge Hunter on April 11th. When do you know offhand when the Michigan, when it got registered here in Michigan? I don't, but I essentially look at the file. Okay. You can find it quicker than I, that'd be great. Yep. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Scarborough, I know you're present also. Do you have any questions or any comments that you would like to make? Uh, yeah, I would like to make a couple comments. Sure. Um, so we had a child support order that was established in Nevada in 2018 and the amount of $1,800. It was a pay to direct, direct order, which I understand that Michigan, I have to um, get a hearing for those arrears to be added. Um, Andrew willfully stopped paying child support um, the, when he was employed. The last payment that he made was in February of 2022 in the amount of $674. Um, he has made it known that he will not pay me child support. Um, and also, um, I had moved to Wyoming. I opened the case there. So my order is in Wyoming. His is in Michigan. I did close out the Wyoming case in September and opened it in Colorado when I relocated. The last arrears balance that Wyoming had calculated in September of 2023 was $44,400. And he has since not made one single payment in over two years. Are you aware of any other open support orders trying to collect money from him? No, um, uh, Wyoming informed him that the case was closed and Colorado um, verified that they had informed him that the case had now been opened. So Colorado is dealing with my end of things. 
Thank you. Yep. Your Honor, I, I know this probably doesn't go against everything, but it's, I have tried when I relocated to Michigan to have everything arranged. She then moved from Chippewa County to uh, Mount Pleasant. And then once again, to Wyoming, uh, where I tried to figure things out. And then she once again moved to Colorado. I have been chasing this since I have moved. And during that time, I have not seen my children since December of 21. Uh, and per that court, same court order, for child support, it's a 50-50 custody order, which I've been told is no longer valid because she doesn't live anywhere. So I'm trying to figure out the same thing so that I can see my children as well. Do you express your concerns about other support orders? What states are you saying those are out of, sir? The same that she just stated, Wyoming and Colorado. Do you have any court dates to appear in Wyoming? I do not, sir. When was the last time you had a court date to appear in Wyoming? I have never had a court date to appear in Wyoming. I received paperwork. Uh, I never received anything else regarding, I received paperwork regarding the child support order, paperwork being filed, and I never received anything after that. Do you have a court date to appear in Colorado? I do not. Uh, same thing, received child support paperwork, uh, have not received anything further from that aspect. Okay. All right, so again, given, um, as stated earlier, I'm recommending a finding of contempt, setting the matter before Judge Hunter on April 11th. Um, I don't find the excuse of I don't know which order to pay to be very uh, valid. As indicated, there's been no court proceedings in Wyoming or Colorado. We've been in court in Michigan. Um, so clearly, there should be payments on the Michigan support order. Um, as to that hearing on April 11th, uh, given the large amount owed, a lack of any payments in Michigan since this has been in effect since since August of last year and there's been no payments. Um, should Mr. Dibble make a payment of $6,000 prior to that court hearing, then that court hearing would be canceled. All right, thank you both for appearing. That does conclude the matter. Thank you, Your Honor.